Hello, my name is Jesse Murphy, and this is my presentation on my Surf and Humanities 2024 Summer Research Project, Patchwork Narratives, the Importance of Form on Reading Hypertext Literature in the Classroom and Beyond. Now, despite the stiff-sounding title, this is actually a very hands-on project where I served as a research assistant to Professor Maddie Berker to design a unit for a class on digital media around the hypertext novel Patchwork Girl. But what is hypertext? What is Patchwork Girl? Let me slow down and explain what these things are first. A hypertext is a text organized non-linearly, as opposed to going from point A to point B, through hyperlinks. A hyperlink is a connector attached to something, often a word or phrase, that sends you from one individual chunk of text to another. The technical term for these chunks of text is alexia. If you've ever used Wikipedia and gone from one page to another, that's a hypertext. And hypertext literature is exactly that a work of fiction told non-linearly and connected with hyperlinks. While hypertext fiction existed before in print, like with Vladimir Nabokov's Pale Fire, it really flourished as a digital genre from the late 80s to early 2000s, when personal computers began to become common. Patchwork Girl by Shelley Jackson, published in 1995, is a digital hypertext novel based on Frankenstein by Mary Shelley and The Patchwork Girl of Oz by L. Frank Baum follows the titular patchwork girl, that's her on the right, you'll be seeing more of her as the presentation goes on, the younger sister of the creature from Frankenstein, as she travels to America and goes on a journey of self-discovery. The text is organized into five main sections. The graveyard is a catalog of all the patchwork girl's body parts and who they used to be in life. The journal is the fictionalized journal of Mary Shelley in her meeting with the patchwork girl. The story is about her aforementioned trip and is maybe the largest of the sections although it's hard to tell when everything flows into one another. The quilt is made up of quotes cut up and jumbled together, everything from the books I've already mentioned to works of philosophy and manuals on how to write. Finally, the body of text, maybe the hardest part to describe, is a series of musings on the larger thematic topics of the work, like connection and change. It's a very rich text, but unfortunately, as time has gone on and hardware and software have become more complex, Patchwork Girl software is just out of date now, and modern systems can't run it anymore. There's no official published version that can be ran on Windows computers, and so without easy access it can't be taught in the classroom. Or, at least, it couldn't until I set out to help change that. But why do I think it's so important to make it so that patchwork role can be taught? Digital hypertext is, to be blunt for a second, a minor, academic, and largely forgotten genre. So why does it matter? Well, I think there are several reasons why. First, it helps decenter the book as the default method of distributing knowledge. What do I mean by that? Well, even in today's digital era, we tend to think of the book as the default way of sharing information, whether fiction or nonfiction. It's easy to forget that the book is just a specific kind of object, with both advantages and disadvantages and limitations that come from its form. Looking at hypertext gives us the mental tools to step back from that default a bit. Second, Hypertext is a good starting point when it comes to seeing how digital storytelling has evolved over the years. It provides a good foundation for looking at more contemporary forms such as podcasts and video games. It provides the tools to look at how their mediums shape those. Third, digital storage is extremely fragile. People think that just because you can copy things and save them to the cloud, they're more resilient to being lost, but that's just not true. Storage devices such as floppy disks and CDs, they rot, for lack of a better term, and have the information stored inside them become corrupted and garbled within the time frame of only a couple decades. A book, on the other hand, can stay on a shelf for hundreds of years without any of the words in it becoming gibberish. Plus, with hardware and software constantly advancing, many new computers are simply unable to run older programs which are left to languish. So, a big personal motivation for me with this project was approaching this as a preservation issue. Finally, it just helped fit a gap in the curriculum. There's currently no class at the University of Oregon which looks at internet era forms of media from a literary perspective. It's a work that serves as a perfect starting point for a class like that. My single biggest there. My single biggest task over the summer was assembling the reading list for the unit on Patchwork Girl. I dabbled among the hollow damps of research databases to stitch together an annotated bibliography on the scholarship around Patchwork Girl and hypertext literature in general. Then, with Professor Burkert, I selected the four articles I thought would be best for the classroom. First, 
There's I Know What It Was, You Know What It Was by Alice Bell and Astrid Enslin. It explores second person uh, perspective in hypertext literature. That's saying things like you are, you see, you do, and so on. And compares it against games and text adventures. Because of hypertext's closer proximity to standard limited form, it's able to experiment more with blending the divide between the you as a reader and the you as a character. Second was The Irreducibility of Space by Christian, Kristen Veal. It's about how we think of the things on a computer, such as apps, the internet, etc., as space, even though it's abstract, and how metaphors such as the labyrinth affect our thinking on those things. Flickering Connectivities by N. Catherine Hales is about the importance of analyzing Patchwork Girl as a digital work specifically and not looking at, at it like it's a book. There's no solid start or end point, so we can't just read it with consideration for those things like we can a novel. Finally, I'm a Double Agent by Paul Hackman is a response to Hales. It talks about the interplay between print and hypertext and how there's both less and more linear sections in Patchwork Girl and that we shouldn't just discard the thinking about print entirely when analyzing Patchwork Girl. Uh, print and hypertext influence one another. But that still begs the question, how do we actually make Patchwork Girl available for students? There are several factors that we need to consider for this. First, the legal aspect. Patchwork Girl is under copyright, and its publisher still currently selling the software for Mac computers. We needed to make sure we had a strong, fair use case. Second, the technical aspect. Story Space, the software Patchwork Girl was built in, has features that can't easily be replicated on modern online infrastructure. We had to figure out what we were capable of doing with our limited time. These aspects, which really come hand in hand, had to be weighed against making this as accurate a translation as possible. Because translation happens not just between languages, but between mediums as well, such as old and new hardware. It is an inherently transformative process. Something is always, always lost in the process. There were six benchmarks I looked at to make sure that the translation of Patchwork Girl was as smooth as possible. There was code, or the programming that runs the digital media, language, or in other words, the actual writing, modality, which means the appearance and presentation of the work, materiality, which is the physical hardware the work is accessed through, experience, what it feels like to interact with the work, and finally context, the cultural context the work was made in. One last factor was J Shelley Jackson's authorial intent about what would happen to her work. I'll just quote from her directly. She said, it was one of my central theses in Patchwork Girl that there is no central thesis. There is no center, there is no self, there is only a temporary and contingent co coming together of influences and borrowed pieces that come, have easily come together in another form and will come together in another form. That the desire to make oneself coherent and permanent is a doomed one, but not only doomed, but also an unhealthy one. That part of our job is to learn to let go of ourselves. And literature is one of the ways we learn to let go of ourselves. Learn to release ourselves into the stream of other people's thoughts and visions, and to enjoy that alienation from our own monotonous stream of consciousness. And so when people asked me early on whether I was bothered that technology was advancing obsoleting Patchwork Girl, my answer was that it was completely appropriate that that happened. I was willing to let it become obsolete because to try to hang on to it would be inconsistent with my central argument. Like, this self, unlike other selves, this self is really important, this self is internal, this one is go really going to last. That seemed hypocritical to me. Having said that, having said that, if my work disappears, I would like its disappearance to be recognized as part of the work, as a conscious choice of the work, and a manifestation of its underlying arguments rather than just an accident of history. So I'm happy to have other people working on trying to preserve it, so long as it doesn't misrepresent my purpose in writing it in the first place. Making sure that we didn't misrepresent her purpose was a very important part of the process in considering what we would do. The solution we eventually decided on to balance all these different aspects to, was to make Patchwork Girl accessible through an on-site computer lab with two devices running it. One is just a modern computer, but the other is an old PC from the 90s. Combined with an original floppy disk we got through an interlibrary loan, which, let me tell you, getting to hold the original packaging was maybe my favorite part of the whole summer, but combined with that, students will be able to access Patchwork Girl almost as if they traveled back to the 90s. 
Now that patchwork has been made accessible, if everything is going to plan on my professor's end, it will be taught in a class this w upcoming winter 2025 term. It, the tentative name for it that we have is English 350 Digital Narrative Forms. This project and the work I've done on it also serves as a great foundation of potential future projects around Patchwork Girl, such as a night library tiny gallery exhibit where visitors could maybe even play it, or a senior thesis. I'd like to thank Professor Burkert for letting me work with her on this over the summer. Our meetings where we'd talk and brainstorm were always the highlight of my week. I'd also like to thank the Cure team for giving me this opportunity to dip my toes into research for the first time. And finally, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this. Thank you, and goodbye.